2014, the town set up a Patriot Hills redevelopment incentive overlay district to encourage development of the Letchworth property. The overlay district allows for a number of uses, including senior citizens housing, assisted living facilities, and mixed-use residential. Tonight, we are going to hear about a proposal to transform the Letchworth property that has been crumbling and a financial burden on our town. The developer envisions a community of mixed uses, including housing for seniors, young people, empty nesters, and an assisted living facility. In a minute, I'm going to introduce Glenn Vetramil from Hudson Park Group to give a presentation. Glenn is a proven developer who has done high-end projects and has a reputation of delivering a good product. Glenn is currently underway with a project at a former psychiatric hospital in Osning. The presentation that Glenn is going to give tonight is his vision and an idea for the property. If the project were to move forward, it would still need to go before the planning board and the environmental review. Many of the questions you may have after the presentation will be answered in these later stages. There is a need for this type of housing in our community, a place for our seniors to live comfortably, for the elderly to live in independent but receive the care they need, and a place for our young people to live and work in this town we, also, we all love so much. I just thought when I walked in, and also uh, a recreation center for our youth. I know uh, Councilman Paul Jerakum is a Little League coach. Many, year, many through the winter, they would meet in this back room here in, in the road building. And I can't imagine having a new recreation center for multi-use for our young people. So we'll see how this project, it's just in the early proposal stage, but at this time I'd like to invite Glenn up to do his presentation. Hi everyone, thank you for allowing me to give this presentation on this special piece of property. I'm also the, I um, don't want to interrupt you, could somebody quickly turn the lights out in the back? Glenn also is providing the town with a copy of this, so we'll put it up uh, early in the morning um, that you can view on our town website. Yes, so um, my name's Glenn Vetramile, and my company, Hudson Park Group, is focused on the, uh oh, what did I do? Is focused on the um, Hudson Valley, and the uh, tri-state area. I was a developer with a very large development company in the city, a senior guy, the related companies, the developers of um, Hudson Yards, Time Warner Center, etc. So I've had a lot of experience with mixed use projects over the years. I'm gonna try to focus this a little bit. A little bit better. Not perfect. Um, and um, had a lot of experience doing uh, adaptive reuse. Um, I started out my uh, education at uh, Cornell studying architecture. And so all of my projects, I get a great deal of personal satisfaction out of the design and, and the architects that I work with. So I think you'll see the designs of some of the projects I've done. I, I think you'll like them. And then lastly, uh, I'm a board member of Community Capital New York, which is a community development uh, financial uh, institution. We make very small loans to people. A couple of our recent loans were to uh, a landscaper who wanted to buy a truck and some uh, lawnmowers. We made a loan to an individual who wanted to start up a health food store in upstate New York. And we also make small grants and loans to um, uh, 
developers who want to do affordable housing upstate New York. So I just, so I've seen all different ends of the spectrum. All set? So this is a project, let me back up, that um, Jim mentioned in Austin, New York. It's a, a, a former a psychiatric hospital that has 10 buildings. We're raising those 10 buildings and we're putting in this age-targeted uh, townhouse project, 55 plus. The uh, prospective buyers we know will be uh, empty nesters, people in their 60s and 70s who no longer want a large home but want an amply sized townhouse with garage. Are you all set? Okay. And, um, and the style is in a, um, a contemporary farmhouse style. There's a 10% affordable requirement that Austin uh, has as part of its uh, zoning, and these are the affordable units. So, we still put a lot of uh, thought and effort into the affordable product. This is a project, a concept project for a site in Croton, Adirondack style design. It's multifamily. This is a project that I opened down in Tuckahoe, New York. It's a 120 unit rental, luxury rental. It's getting some of the highest rents in the county. This is a street, interior street view. It actually is divided by Midland Place. And it's three stories. The units on the left um, have walkouts. It was something that I wanted so that people could come both through the building or with the uh, little stoops. And then there are little courtyards uh, on the units that you can see on the right. This is a project of similar size that I'm doing in Dobbs Ferry. Children's Village, which is a 150 year old institution um, catering to inner city kids, boys, uh, is selling me 30 acres on the eastern side and we are proposing similarly to this project uh, a seniors component of assisted and independent living units, a rental component, and also age targeted townhouses. This is a view of the, um, the multifamily residential. So when we looked at this site, my architects, you know, we started thinking about what do we want this project to look like, and we started doing some pictures and views of the site itself, looking at um, view sheds that we want to maintain, uh, looking at the green spaces, looking at literally how the sun traverses the site, and then the actual site itself. And then we started thinking about, well, how can we possibly make the site more regular and more efficient? And our first thought was, to, um, I'm going to go one more slide. So the 16th hole, we're going to obviously maintain the golf course, but the 16th hole currently dog legs like this, and our thought is to have it dog leg this way, to the right, I guess you'd call that, and then reposition the 17th hole, which is here, up at the top. We might come into this little nut, small piece here, but what that'll do for the side is make it much more regular. So it's a much more efficient site. I've worked with a uh, golf course architect, DeVries, on another project, and they're very good at certainly doing entire golf courses, but in the case that I worked with them, they we're tweaking and upgrading various holes, and I would propose bringing DeVries in to do the repositioning of those two holes, and maybe looking at the golf course in general and coming up with ideas to improve it. <clears throat> so the plan that we are thinking about is a more traditional site plan that 
encourages uh, people and pedestrians to uh, congregate, interact, and downplaying the importance of the car. The car will, st will have, you know, speed controls, all sorts of things, but to make it a much more social uh, type of land plan, including pocket parks, um, and I'll walk through some of those. These are some ideas of, this is a Bermuda project, but just getting ideas of little mews and green spaces. Other ideas that we want to incorporate into the site. We've done quite a bit more analysis than this shows. We did look at some of the features on the site, stone walls. Um, and then the site plan that we are thinking about. So this is um, Willow Grove Road right here. Can you see my pointer? No? There. <laughs> I'll, I'll go up here. This is an important slide. So Willow Grove Road, okay? The current Kirkwright building, okay? Uh, Nat Road is up there. And we propose essentially a spine road going up the center. The center town green. And then a cul-de-sac here. The seniors component, which is the independent and assisted living, will be here with its own little courtyard. And then coming off of the little growth from a multi-family unit, 125 units in accordance with the overlay zone, uh, with parking on the inside so you wouldn't see it. And then a series of rows with uh, townhouses, these units looking out over the 16th hole and those over the 17th. And these are all 55 plus age targeted townhouses. And then over here, these are uh, flats. They also would be for 55 plus. It'd be a bit small and they would come in at a little bit lower price point. But once again, for retirees, those were early empty nesters in this area here. Okay? At the end of the spine is our uh, clubhouse and community center. And I'll give you a little more detail as we walk through the slides. So the Kirkbride building, we think is a very impressive, beautiful building in and of itself. And we think it should be, because it has such a civic look to it, be the new courthouse and have its own entrance off of the low road its own parking and the landscaping done in such a way that it gives it more prominence as a self-standing building. But it's a gorgeous building. And then our other thought is, okay, the, um, the basketball court and uh, recreation uses that are in there, we then put them up in a butler building up by the baseball diamonds here and create a, a building for the basketball and other sports uses and one that would have um, garage doors that would open out so that there would be this connection between the diamonds and the interior of the Butler building. And then the community center uh, will have a pool. Not sure if it'll have an indoor pool, but it'll have a pool, a fitness center, yoga studio, a cycling studio, uh, some kind of a coffee bar, a viewing room for movies, and then a community gathering room. So this is the program that we are thinking, and it's in compliance with Patriot, Patriot Hills incentive overlay. The townhouses, a hundred of them, two and three bedroom units, um, more twos, and they all have um, they all have um, studios. Excuse me, um, dens and, and offices because we think that profile wants to work at home. It won't be commuters. The condo flats are the, also the ones that I pointed out to you, and they will be primarily two bedroom units. Multifamily will be primarily one bedroom units, maybe a handful of studios and a handful of two bedroom units. 
and then the assisted and independent units for those um, needing varying amounts of care um, will be probably on the order of 60% independent and 40% assisted in some memory care. And then the multifamily that I mentioned to you up front. Okay, oh I got multifamily there twice, I'm sorry. We're not doing two multifamily projects, don't worry. So then we started getting into thoughts on um, what should the townhouses look like, what should be the character of the architecture, and we, as you saw in one of my earlier projects, we like contemporary farmhouse, which has batten and board siding, um, standing seam metal roofs, um, color palette of white and light colors, and then darker roofs. This is another style altogether. We might do a portion of um, the townhouses with more of a brick, contemporary brick style. And this gives you kind of an idea of the muse that we would have running down the center of some of these that has no, have, has no cars. And then this, and then this is a, um, a uh, farmhouse style that I like in particular, the one on the left, I just like the colors of it. Another project again, and the detailing of wood porches, um, the railing, the lighting, all of those things we look at in great detail. More of it. So things we've been thinking about, um, you know, at the top of this, I would say, here you have all of these buildings that have sit, sat there. They're environmentally uh, contaminated with asbestos and other things. So coming in, one of the things we would do, obviously, is raise the buildings, remediate them, uh, cart them away. The carting cost for these kinds of things is very expensive. Um, they require manifests for each one of the um, each one of the truckloads has to be manifested and then you have to find a, a, ready, a ready and willing dump site. So it's a very complicated de, uh, op operation. New York DEC regulates all of that. And then uh, new tax revenues, very roughly, we kind of did our own back of the envelope analysis and we think it'll be somewhere in the order of a million two of new tax revenues benefiting the town and the school district. Um, and then, of course, the various uh, housing choices. Uh, one of the things I'd like to point out is you don't have any uh, contemporary seniors uh, facilities around here that really cater to people who are becoming uh, you know, a couple where one of them may be requiring some form of PT, medication management, or whatever. And an independent unit is a very attractive unit. You still have your own kitchen. You still have um, what feels like a, a, an individual unit. But um, adjacent to it, you have full medical assistance. And you can generally, in an a la carte basis, pick whatever assistance and medical treatment you may need. And as you get older and uh, more infirmed, you then um, can move into assisted living where you get all of your meals taken care of. Uh, we mentioned the Sports and Recreation Center and then, of course, the Kirkbride, um, which we think would be a beautiful courthouse. We view um, this kind of project, and my one in Dobbs Ferry, we call it multi-generational, and that means that you're able to essentially age in place. You can come in in your 50s and go into independent. You can then go into assisted and whatever, and you can be in one of these facilities with varying levels of care for 30 or long more years. And that's it. That's it. Well, well. And it didn't. And it didn't. It didn't fail me, this, because I was a little Good concerned job. trying to get this thing started up. Good job. Well, first, I'm going to, um, just a couple quick things. So, you mentioned uh, 
the golf course, the golf course company. I know our, our golf course director, Dave Fusco, is here. But just to the people who are here, uh, so there's no confusion. Uh, the golf course, even though he's uh, an opportunity, maybe we'll see how it progresses if it goes, uh, to uh, reconfigure a hole with a top company that does that. But just to be clear, no confusion, there's no intent or the golf course is not for sale. I made that clear to you, Glenn, but just so the people here, this does not include uh, a sale of the golf course. Um, I also look at some of the buildings, some I, some I stand out and, and I get excited for, uh, some not so, and I believe the overlay district, do I have Max there? Our town planner, I believe the height restriction is 45 feet. Is that correct, Max? Do you know offhand? Except for hotels. Yeah, and he's, you're not proposing a hotel, so there are height restrictions. Uh, you know, the, when we did the overlay district, uh, they held public hearings here, public comments, and, and this was um, a lot of what people wanted, recreation, senior housing, opportunity for our young people. Uh, it, you also, when you look at a project of, of this size, we're not looking to overly impact our school district. And that, that to me, which makes this attractive, the assisted living facility. And you mentioned uh, the independent facility. I, I think of my own parents, you know, and when my mom got a little on, and if my father was able to stay close to her in an independent and, and still have the care. I also think of my daughter a young person who's uh, getting married in September, and we need one of the things that the census has showed, you know, we're, we're losing young, young people. So we, with, we like an opportunity to um, the multifamily uh, rental units. With, um, I know it's tough as a developer, we want to keep it uh, price range affordable for our young people, and that would be a goal. Um, this is still just an early, very early stage. You'd have to come with a, with a presentation and uh, uh, an opportunity before the planning board if this is to move forward. You'd have to, we haven't talked financial benefit for the town, which uh, we'd, we'd have to uh, sit and work out a, a fair and equitable contract. We know the history of this property. Uh, everybody here is aware of uh, the cost of remediating the site and moving forward. But I think it's an exciting presentation. I want to thank you for, for being here. Early on, I said it'd be a time for questions. You know, people would ask me today, what about traffic? Well, that would all impact in the part of a secret review. You'd have to have um, traffic studies, uh, wastewater, the amount on a, on a sewer. So this is just the beginning stage. Uh, I know we have a lot here on the agenda, but I'm not going to be able to have a, a question and answer session all night here. But if there's somebody, raise your hand who, who would like a little. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, we'll do this. I'm going to do this for for about 10 minutes. And if if somebody would, I think you have the opportunity. The developers here, just like, and I'm also going to. If the board members have questions, you can also. You know, go ahead, sir. Is this a managed development? Who's responsible for the landscaping, the upkeep, the meters, and things like that? You talk about. Sorry, great question. Um, it, it will be in the association. Uh, all the townhouses will be in the association. The, whether or not an association. I have a question. Um, why are we not preserving some of this urban space, like the walking trails for the residents? And I know that the, the town receives parking money. So why can't we turn on the park money to make this open space for us that live here currently? Okay, that's that's a good suggestion. Yes? Well you, you, you can answer it if you want, but it's 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 for the senior growing department kind of are you considering single level or are you multi level? Yes, sir. I hate stairs. <laughs> <laughs> All the all of the assisted projects that I know of are at least two stories. They're all two stories. Sometimes three. But they have other things. It's pretty common process. How did you come up with 
two million dollars in tax benefits. Is that yearly, and are you going to seek a pilot? It is uh, a yearly amount, and it's looking at the comparable properties in the other way, multifamily townhouses uh, over some years. And I've done enough of these projects that I kind of have a sense of what this would be. So it's just, again, and I said on the slide, very well. But we would obviously, you know, the assessor would get very involved. And during the seeker process, there's a huge environmental impact statement. Mm -hmm. It's a huge volume. Any, so maybe some of you don't know that secret. So it's the State Environmental Quality Review Act. And any time a project's over a certain size and has a certain level of impacts, the state mandates that you go through the secret process. And a very voluminous document, the environmental impact statement, has to be done. And it includes a fiscal assessment. And we use third-party fiscal uh, analysts and has to go through all um, utilities, wastewater, stormwater, air quality, obviously traffic. So any things you can think of that would impact the town have to be analyzed. And the town, similarly, hires third-party consultants. They are using Nelson Coat, uh, which is a uh, large firm that is doing some other of my projects. And they uh, review all these documents. We pay for we'll, we'll pay an escrow for the town to pay these consultants. You think, Greg, he also asked, because something we haven't discussed at all, he asked about pilot agreements. You know, we haven't gotten in anywhere near that, so, you know, we're really, really close. That $1.2 million, it's, uh, it might not be real. I don't want to scare him, Glenn, but I think it's going to be higher. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes? Yeah, I, I know it's very premature, but do you have any sense of what the cost will be on these units to see what that range? Well, the, the assisted is the rentals. And the rentals is a monthly rental for the unit. And then depending on the level of service, it can range. Jim, you next with your hand raised. Jim? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought that was Jim with his hand raised. No. Sitting next to Jim. Well, so point rentals is that a priority? If it's the housing, the townhouses, and uh, is it gonna be an outside starting point? I mean, I'm the prime guy. I'm 74 now, get the ball wrong, and uh, so how's that gonna work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep calling me. Uh, but, you know, I mean, legally, we can't do that, but, you know. I have one more question in the back. Uh, so I was impressed. Thank you. you know, things are long needed. So I have a multi-part question. You can answer as many parts of it as you can. You mentioned about trying to minimize use of cars. Is there any reason that? Uh, in the beginning, you showed six or eight of your projects that were all hard storms. Now, how many of those projects are actually in operation? And then this may be directed to the board of the main new tax map lot that comes off the main road. It seems like this piece is bigger than that one lot. So can you go over which buildings? Obviously, you're saving the curb line, which is impressive. How many, what other buildings? It sounds like the clubhouse was included, this building was included. No, I, can you kind of tell us roughly? Sure, the sure. I'll answer the subdivision to incorporate this? Okay, good questions. I'll let you answer, but I'll answer the questions. So, um, the um, Kirk Wright would remain as the court. So that would, um, you know, on the, on the last proposal we had, big problem was what are we going to do with a court? 
I was actually very impressed when Glenn came up with that idea. I don't know why it was never looked at before. It's an impressive building that looks like a court building. I think it would be a, a good suit, especially with a separate entrance. So every other, not the clubhouse. The clubhouse is, is um, staying as the clubhouse. This building, the, uh, all the buildings, so there's approximately, if I count right, eight buildings. Every building except the Kirkbright, which is actually in the overlay district. It was one of the buildings when we did the overlay district. We wanted to keep part of the history of the Letchworth. It's probably the best attractive building. So that building must stay in without the clubhouse. Everything else is would, would hopefully be developed if it happens. The second second part to the question. Yeah. Is there any retail and talk about minimizing use of cards and then not just be curious in the artist rendering you had in your first six or eight, how many of the projects are up and running? Uh, two of them are. And then we had another three that I think I showed you the Oscar the awesome. So but they're all in different stages of development. I showed them to you because I felt the architecture also was similar to what we're proposing here. Um, and as far as retail goes, uh, there is a, a spot on the long road road where we might put in uh, a coffee shop or something like that. Um, but nothing, you know, no substantial retail, but it could be a coffee shop or something. I think, uh, is that Kevin way in the back waving his hand? Uh, don't be afraid of Meg, come on up. We're, we're going to relocate the basketball, you know, which is our only indoor recreation facility for children. Um, we're the new basketball court and recreation center we completed before we started turning that into a courthouse. Excellent question, yes, because that. That, uh, when we had this conversation, that Kirkbright building is used constantly. And uh, we definitely would have a new building constructed before we would turn that into a court building. One more? Sure. We wouldn't lose any baseball, right? uh, Absolutely not. So the, the area, if you remember the project where Raj had looked to um, do a senior center, community center, it's town-owned land there. That would not be a, a senior center, a community center. It would strictly be for recreation. We have a plan for up at the clubhouse. We have half of the side of the clubhouse has never been finished. There's a large room. There's an elevator there. We're looking at course now, the town board is, to convert that for an opportunity for uh, our seniors and a board meeting. The building that you're sitting here today the, the roof was falling apart, the walkway, the heat. Uh, for the financial stability of the town, we cannot continue just to heat this building, so we want to consolidate as the goal to, to, the, to the clubhouse. I think it's uh, a great opportunity. But once again, I want to thank you, Glenn. I know we're in the, the very initial stage. I want you to keep contact with the board and we'll keep the public informed of where it goes from then. So thank you very much. Sure. Sure. Our thoughts are that um, hiking is probably the number one amenity that all of these new projects want. They want some uh, hiking or trail system. So we would make every effort to connect this into the bigger Palisades trail system. Um, and I think the image showed you the importance of creating little parks and green spaces within the project. That's another thing. And then similarly, you know, if you look at the amount of green space, you know, there's a fair amount of green space that we'll maintain, but... but there's also 500 units. So you're talking a thousand people on those spots of green space. Yeah. Right now, how many parks are crowded? Bear Mountain is overcrowded, Rockland Lake is overcrowded, and Lake Welsh we can't get into ever. So where do we go? Right we live here. Right up the street, you have what we're proposing is a sports facility by moving the current basketball court up there. So that would be a big, big central recreation area. Within the project, as I pointed out, there is a fitness center, a a uh, yoga studio, a bike studio, all for the residents. Right, I'm not talking about the residents. I'm talking about 
thank you very much. Thank you, Glenn. We'll take a short five minutes to let Glenn pack up, and then we'll go back to our regular town board agenda. Quick five-minute recess.